Well, good morning, guys. Pastor Steve here. Just wanted to share a brief meditation with you today. Today, I've been meditating in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, and specifically in verses 9 through 13. So I wanted to read those for you here. The scripture says, And he replied, Go, say to these people, Keep listening, but do not understand. Keep looking, but do not perceive. Dull the minds of the people, deafen their ears, and blind their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their mouths, turn back and be healed. Then I said, Until when, Lord? And he replied, Until cities lie in ruins without inhabitants, houses are without people, the land is ruined and desolate, and the Lord drives the people far away, leaving great emptiness in the land. Though a tenth will remain in the land, it will be burned again, like the terebinth or the oak that leaves a stump when felled. The holy seed is the stump. So here this is from Isaiah 6, where Isaiah has this incredible moment where he's taken up into heaven and he sees the, the Lord's throne room. And um, his immediate reaction to seeing God's holiness um, is um, that he doesn't deserve to be there, that he'll probably die. Then God sends a uh, coal um, to signify his sins being taken away. The coal t- touches, his, touches his lips as that signifying. And then um, as Isaiah ign- uh, recognizes that God has removed his sin, he then hears the voice of the Lord. And the voice, the Lord says, who will I send and who will go for us? Isaiah says, here am I, send me. And then God gives Isaiah the message that is to be sent or what Isaiah is to be sent to do. And... Um, So this is uh, quite a challenging passage of Scripture, um, a very difficult one to understand its meaning for us today. So instead of trying to tackle that, let's just look at what it meant to Isaiah. Isaiah lived in a land that had a lot of religious people. Um, A good king who feared the Lord had died. And the next king um, that was coming was a very godless um, and uh, a very godless and and, um, unfaithful man and um, brought a lot of religious disaster into the kingdom. However, what Isaiah is stepping into and dealing with is a lot is also a lot of um, uh, uh, religious idolatry where people were um, pretending to serve the Lord. You see later in Isaiah, God says that you know you you give me all these different offerings, actually in Isaiah one, you give me all these offerings and you and you you come before me. And yet, um, your hearts are far from me. And he says, "Why? Who is required of you this trampling of my courts, this coming before me? And yet, just all this noise that you bring that means nothing." In other words, their um, their hearts were not after God. They had all the right religious practices, but their hearts were after their own their own wealth and their own prosperity, their own happiness. Their hearts were not after God. And so here to these people, God sends Isaiah and, the, and God says that your mission is to say to these people, keep listening, but do not understand. Keep looking, but do not perceive. Now, interesting is that God is saying to, these, to Isaiah that um, he's telling him, this is the message. You're going to say this to these people. And they're not going to get it. You're going to tell them that God's truth is right there, but they're missing it. And they're going to look at you, and they're going to—they're not going to—they're not going to accept. Now, um, as you can imagine, Isaiah says, "This is unbelievable. How long is this going to last? That these people will hear this message, and they will reject it utterly." And God says, "It's going to ha- its going to keep going until there's nothing left to um, that resembles the religious idolatry that people have had before me." pretending to serve me, but in their hearts, worshiping and serving themselves. And so uh, this was the the message that Isaiah was tasked with. And um, I don't want to jump into in this meditation of what this means for you and I, but I think there are some obvious parallels that would jump out. And uh, as those parallels jump out to you, take them to heart and recognize that God's message hasn't changed. His message of repentance hasn't changed from Isaiah's day to now. 
Um, and yes, there are many people who are uh, who have religion. They know what religion is. They know how to exercise religion. But when it comes to their hearts before God, their hearts are far from God. They're not, they're not interested in worshiping God. So uh, are we in the same situation as Isaiah? I don't think we're in the exact same situation. But there are some parallels that we can, that we can take and learn from. Um, and yet God has called us to give his message, his message of hope in Jesus Christ, his message of repentance from sin. And uh, for those who accept that message, there is hope and the promise of eternity with the Messiah. For those who reject that message, there is, there is, uh, there is no hope. There is misery. Uh, so uh, I'm going to leave that comparison there and uh, hope that this meditation is an encouragement and a blessing for you today. Uh, hope you have a great day in the Lord and God bless. Go in peace.